Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about permanently mounting the Savwinch Anchor Winch and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Another day of bludging off a mate to help me. Doran's running away. <laughs> there you go, Doran. Say hi. Hello, how's it going? And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the Anchor Winch back on. And a few people mentioned about maybe shortening the Samson post that the mooring goes on rather than raising the winch up, keep everything nice and low. I think it's a good option. We can definitely take 50 mil out of the base here, and we can also take probably 40 mil off the top and recap it. Obviously recapping just the top would be awesome if that was all that was required. So we're gonna pop this back on and just see how much we would have to lower this in order to get the clearance without lifting this up. Failing that, we will just lift it, but this could be a great way to keep everything low. So this is the clearance we need. See how this comes up and ends up inside the diameter of the drum. I am tempted to actually cut it right off, and then I can cut the top off in the workshop, all that kind of thing. Um, but there was a small chance we could take the top off and just leave it, but I think it's too close. I think by the time you have chain on the outside of the spool. The more we looked at it, the more we realised we really needed to cut some off the bottom and the top in order to get the safety margin we needed. So the obvious first step was just to cut it off the deck completely. Nice. Beautiful. All right. We're going to take the winch off the bulkhead again so we can weld round. Pretty happy with where it is and it'll let us get the needle gun in here and we'll get rid of all this rust. This may, that's quite a big bit of swelling, this may go all the way through the deck, so we may repair this at the same time. So huge thanks to Doran for coming out and giving me a hand. Last job Doran did was just bevel the top of the stub ready to uh, weld it back on. Then I took the post itself back to the workshop to shorten it. The plan with the post now is to take about 25 mil off the top, about 50 mil off the bottom. And while I'm here, I'm also going to basically halve these horns because they're just way too big. There's no reason for them to be that big. So, really it's chop, 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 well done. What I'll do is I'm gonna use these end caps again. So while they're attached to the post and they're nice and easy, I'll cut the end caps really close, then we'll cut back as well. With the base, it's at this angle to be on the deck. So we're gonna do a cut parallel to that so it goes back on straight. No assistant today, so I'm gonna have a go at cutting it myself. Um, I think it'll be fine. It's still sore, can't bend it much. But it's been a month, so, you know, give it a whirl. All right, done. Seventy-five off these. Those things are crazy long. And all right, let's go seventy. All right, so this one's parallel to here. The rest are all square cuts. After all the ends were cut off, I just started cleaning up the surfaces and giving them a slight bevel, getting ready to weld those end caps back on now it's been shortened.
to make putting the end caps back on a little bit neater, I decided to TIG weld them. So I just sharpened up a couple of tungstens by putting them in the drill and then putting them on the stone. It's not the ideal way, but it's certainly very quick. You will have seen how much smoke I had just then, so I ground off about another inch of paint just to clean things up. All right, here's my new shrunk down Samson post. Beveled the end here, ready to weld into the boat. There was a bit of contamination in this, obviously, old steel, so there's a little bit of porosity, but I think by the time it's painted up, I don't think it's gonna leak water inside or anything and will obviously stick welded onto the deck itself so it's nice and strong and good penetration there. Because of the porosity I decided just to wire brush the whole thing, that way when we paint it it'll be uniform instead of lumpy as well. So I'll weld it on first then we'll put primer on it otherwise it's just going to burn off again. With the post off obviously I couldn't easily put it back on the mooring so big thanks to Dave for letting me put it on his uh, wharf overnight. Interestingly you can see a couple of tinnies there. Renko's about twice the length of your average tinny, nine meters, compared to say a 4.5 meter tinny. So it gives you an idea how small it really is as a boat. This is the rust that Doran needle gunned out yesterday. And given the deck, I think it's only three or four mil thick. This has got to be like sub millimeter thick. So I'm going to try and pad weld it up. I think there's a really high chance of blowing a hole through it. But maybe if I do some runs really cold from the thicker section and build onto each bead as I go, you know, we might have some chance. We've got these welds I did last week up here, bottoms out a bit so I've actually just cut a wedge of timber I'm going to try and hammer down yeah, perfect all right Michelle. you gonna walk up to Mount Tom Dave uh, maybe you know Tom Dave or the other way up to this one up ah there. yeah 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 yep yeah. the Bruins Point that one. Oh really <laughs> nice. Uh, Wedley. Wedley. Yeah. Dodgy. I'll oh, have fun. Thank you. Ed, are you ready? Get your tail out of the water, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> sort yourself out. Huh? Eddie, turn around. You're facing the wrong way. <laughs> Can't face backwards. He's got reasonably good balance. Oh. <laughs> 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 totally. Eddie, turn round. Sit in the black bit. <laughs> Eddie, face Bronny, the other way. I think he just he doesn't like looking at your back, Bron. Rear gunner, Eddie. Good morning. I'm going to head down to the boat and finish welding that plate out. Took a lot longer than I thought, uh, mostly because I'm terrible at welding out of position. It's not pretty, but I think it'll be strong enough. Just doesn't look that good. Uh, what I'm going to do first though is put a layer of fiberglass on the seat and some carpet on the top of the footstool, on the footrest. But first thing I want to do here, because it'll be pivoting up, it'll make sense. Uh, I'm actually just going to shant for this one corner. Got a new blade in this, so hopefully it's not going to be too hard to cut. Going to use some contact adhesive. What does it say? Hold down Liz while you stir. Uh, completely cover both surfaces until touch dry. Thick, goopy stuff. Okay. 
feels like a double-edged sword. I don't want to get it past the edge, but at the same time, the edges are where it's going to lift if it's not glued properly, so... I'm thinking once it's set, we could maybe lightly sand the edges if there's too much glue poking out. Don't know, cross that bridge when we get to it, I guess. Okay, let's let that dry for 20 minutes. While we put some glass on this. All right, I think I'll cut it, let it overhang a bit, and then we'll trim it afterwards. Thumbs definitely on the man, still pretty sore, it was weird, so that's the first time I've used scissors and that was fine, even having my thumb in the scissors. You can see now, it's healed pretty well, you can still see little pock marks where the stitches were, and it's definitely swollen compared to the other one, but on the mend, I do feel like it's turned a bit of a corner. Alright, let's mix up some glass, some resin. The one thing I can't even do remotely is do a button up, it's weird. Certain things like that are just no chance. Uh, I'm gonna use some West System epoxy, pretty common for boat stuff. I went with the slow hardener. Um, maybe shouldn't have given it's the middle of winter. Pretty much the dead middle of winter at the moment. Um, but, you know, winter in Sydney's not that bad in the scheme of things. With the West System, it's five to one epoxy. The pump on the resin delivers five times as much resin in one pump as the hardener. So you just do one pump, one pump, and you automatically got your five to one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what I do need to do though, these haven't been used before. So we need to get them running. Uh, it's the worst that can happen. As we use the tray, waste not, want not. Gonna be exact. Let's say that first dribble made up for that bit of air. about doing them one to one is you don't actually even have to count. It doesn't matter how many pumps you've got as long as you've got one of each or the same number of each. This is pretty strong glass, double bias glass. Should alleviate any fears people have about the uh, support pole going all the way through the new seat. Particularly given it's got about a 50 mil square head on it as well. To reduce the point loading. Once this is set, I'll drill it, put um, countersunk bolts through the stand, and then I'll actually send it off to get covered so the bolt heads will be under the cushion. putting glass on the end grain but I will just resin coat it anyway just to seal it up. This is inside the boat so it's probably not a big issue but epoxy isn't UV resistant so if you do have just epoxy as a coating you need to paint it with something to keep the sun off it. Just give it a little roll. Nice 
needs to be all pretty much see-through to know that it's fully saturated. I do have a little bit of bad habit of putting too much resin on, so I think we'll just give it a roll and have a look. Okay, it's been 20 minutes now, so let's put this carpet on. Certainly sticky. Okay, uh, what are we gonna do here? I might turn this down and put some weight on it. This is the gasket that goes in behind the savwinch. I'm actually going to cut mm, three to five mil off the top and sides and then when I've got it on I'm going to put a bead of Sikaflex around the top and the side and leave the bottom open to drain to stop water getting in behind it. Okay let's let those two work their magic and we'll head back out to the boat. So, got the plate welded on, bit of epoxy primer on it. Uh, had some bolts in the holes here, so we don't have primer in the holes. Yeah, you know, a little bit booger weld, particularly on the vertical up. Even underneath, it's easier, top's the easiest. So I'll have to practice the vertical up. There's loads of metal there, and I did it quite hot, so I think there's pretty good penetration. So I think with, what's that, you know, three, almost four feet of weld, I think uh, a 14 mil rope's gonna fail before that pulls off the wheelhouse. Got this welded on once again, really awkward, but just piled it up with about five passes, so that's not gonna come off either. All right, while that dries, see, I even had a little cleanup. Ah, uh, these are the bolts. Just put those in some acetone to get the primer off them. Dave's about to put the, uh, Tahatsu back on his runabout having redone the floor, glassed it. Eddie's running around somewhere. There you are, Eddie. Alright, it's my turn to bludge and watch you now, Pedals. Sit and do nothing and watch you work. <laughs> While I'm waiting for that paint to dry, I'm going to drill a hole through the centre of this lead weight. This is gonna be one of our main search weights. And I wanna put this stainless eye in it. So I'm gonna try drilling it with a nine mil drill bit. Might actually be too big. But the idea then is I can thread it in or push it in. Then I'll just have the nut at the other end anyway. Lead actually turned out to be a real nightmare to drill because it's sort of really goopy. It's soft, but it binds up really, really tight. Probably should have done it on the drill press, but got there in the end. Part of me is tempted to cut the excess thread off, but another part of me thinks that might actually be quite a good spike when it hits down into the sand or the mud to help secure it. I think I'll leave it for now. You can always cut it off later. Much harder to put it back. Friends Rick and Cam were coming past in their boat, so they stopped to help me lift the winch up and mount it back on the wheelhouse. I'm going to leave it like this for now. Uh, it's only got primer on it, epoxy primer, but my plan is to sandblast the whole wheelhouse and repaint it, so that's when I'll go nuts with the proper top coats yeah. and everything. Well, on. Um. So much for uh, cutting the gasket and leaving a gap for Sikaflex. I'm going to have to get a blade in there, cut it out, and then we'll do a bead of Sikaflex across the top. Paint wasn't 100% dry, so we've damaged that, but that's okay. That happens when you're running out of daylight. 
but it's on and you can see now the post's nowhere near being you know before it was actually inside the radius of the drum so pretty happy with that now everything's as low as i can get it i think that's going to work pretty well next time we look at this winch hopefully i might uh talk leon and to give me another hand if i'm lucky we'll uh do this wiring and get it spooled up now the other job i need to do is modify the bow spread here to have a second roller be longer have a second roller and accept the rockner anchor sitting permanently on it so i'll have to get some measurements and do a bit of remodeling here because it's not designed to have an anchor sitting permanently but that's what we're moving to Don't fall off until I get back. Pedals on his first run. Hey! <laughs> Eddie with him. Looks all right. Nice. Uh oh. <laughs> Very good. Back in action. Nice night, moon's out, boat's to bed, <laughs> at least still doing circles. Let's go home. Well, thanks for watching. So next job with regards to the winch is get it powered up. Once we've got power, we can put the rope and the chain on because we're going to need the power to spool it on, obviously. So one step at a time. In other bits of news, a uh, viewer Barry sent me this really cool wooden nameplate to go on Renko. So I'm going to have to have a good think about the best place to put this. Um, not 100% sure yet, but I want to make sure it's somewhere really nice. So thank you, Barry, and I'll definitely think about where best to put it. Also, we got, very exciting, the... Uh, underwater metal detectors to start getting into the search stuff so as soon as my hands 100% we'll be getting underwater and starting a lot of that sort of you know the adventures that I plan to use the boat for with the metal detectors my plan for the first video for that is actually to go and visit a friend of mine called Nick who's a real expert at using this particular metal detector underwater so I'm going to go up see him sort of pick his brains about all the things I need to know so we can sort of hit the ground running. So we'll be doing that soon as well. All right, well, take care. I'll catch you soon. See ya. I'm trying to film this uh, outro and Daffy's trying to get my attention. trying to tell me something trying to tell me you're hungry still hmm you've had your breakfast it's all about food with you <laughs> I actually don't think her leg hurts anymore she's just really uncoordinated on it because I don't think it healed in the right orientation unfortunately you don't get the benefit of casts and things like that that I had but you seem happy enough. And that's the main thing. And Dottie's gone all broody, hasn't she? Sitting on the uh, nest, leaving you guys to your uh, own devices. Oh well, say goodbye. See you next week. You're not going to let me get away, are you? Stop ignoring me. All right, hang on. Let's get you some seed then. <laughs> Come on, Shadow. <laughs> you are hungry this morning. How's Daisy doing? Oh, yeah. Here she comes.
There you go, eat some seed. Share it with Daisy. <laughs> Don't make a mess here. Have it down here if you're gonna do that. There you go. You're going the wrong way, Daisy. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> do you make me laugh?